Hey guys, so I wanted to talk about breathing for a second, in particular breathing as it's related to anxiety. There's one main problem that people tend to have when trying to use breathing to help them with symptoms of anxiety. And it comes up a lot. Typically the scenario is I'll be in therapy with somebody or dealing with them in some sort of capacity and I'll be telling them about a breathing exercise. You know, I have my favorites. Most of you are familiar with the four, seven, eight breathing in which you breathe in for four counts, hold it for seven counts and exhale for eight counts. That's one of my favorite kind of quick and dirty breathing exercises. And I'll show that to them or I'll explain it to them. And they say, oh, let me stop you there. I've done that, I've, I've tried breathing. It just doesn't work. It makes me more anxious or I can't you know, turn my mind off. It doesn't help, blah, 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 blah. And that's really kind of one of the fundamental issues that a lot of people have when they're trying to use breathing as a coping skill. They use it when they're stressed. They don't use it when they're not stressed. And that's a problem. Think of it this way. Say you were trying to learn how to um, use a bow and arrow. Let's, let's go way back in time. Let's say that we're, you know, cavemen and women and we're kind of hunter gatherers way back in the day and we're trying to use, uh, you know, a sling or a bow and arrow or some other implement to hunt with. Um, the first time you use that implement, let's just say a bow and arrow, you go out to the field and there's a lion there and your heart's racing, the lion's going to eat you and you go, okay, her first time, let me try to use this bow and arrow. You're probably not going to be able to kill that lion. You're probably going to shoot off into the air. You're not going to know how to knock the bow. You know, you're just going to freak out, drop it, try to run away and get eaten and die. So the reason for that is that you didn't practice that skill. You didn't practice the whole bow and arrow skill. You just assumed that because it is something that can conceivably kill that lion, it would work for you at the time that you needed it. But that's not always the case, right? You sometimes need to practice things. Same goes for like if you're playing basketball, free throws. You know, you're not gonna go and get to your game and step up to the free throw line after getting fouled and go, okay, here's the first time I'm throwing a free throw and then you don't hit it, right? You wanna practice that. You know, if you're like an NBA player, you've done it so many damn times that it's muscle memory at this point. And that's what you wanna do with your breathing exercises as well. So breathing exercises for anxiety are a skill, a skill that you need to practice and a skill that you need to build. Same sort of thing, you want to use it when you're not under pressure, when you're not being stalked by that line or when you're not, you know, the heat's not on when you're in the middle of a game or something like that for basketball. You wanna do it during times of, you know, relative non-stress. Of course, if you're somebody with generalized anxiety, you may always be a bit anxious, but we're talking about times when you're not sort of at the verge of panic. You're not already out in a situation that's causing you significant anxiety. The lower end of your threshold. So maybe when you're at home, you know, maybe in the morning or before you go to bed or even the middle of the day or something like that, you want to practice the skill of breathing. Because basically what you're doing is you're teaching your body how to react relax rather. There's this whole thing called the relaxation response, which is when your nervous system sort of flips from the fight or flight nervous system to the rest or digest nervous system. This is a very simplified way of thinking about it. Sorry if you can hear my baby crying upstairs. <laughs> but basically you have two different sides to your nervous system. One gets you ready for action. The other one helps you calm down and recover from the other side of it. So the rest and digest nervous system slows things down, you know, lowers your heart rate, lowers your breathing rate and things like that to help you recover. So what you want to do is you want to teach your body how to sort of flip that switch and go from fight or flight to the resting type of nervous system action. And the way to do that is through breathing, but you need to practice it as a skill. So maybe three times a week, even more than that, if possible, you want to sit down during a time when you're relatively not stressed and practice your favorite breathing exercise. It could be four, seven, eight breathing. It could be, you know, triangle breathing. It could be just deep diaphragmatic breathing. Uh, any sort of breathing they've taught you in yoga class or you learn from some YouTube video, it doesn't really matter. The point is you pick one and you stick with it and you use that as a skill and you build it up. You do it time after time. The first few times it's gonna be pretty hard to actually calm yourself down, but eventually you learn what it feels like to sort of kick in that, what's called the parasympathetic nervous system. You learn how to kick that in. You learn how to kind of teach your body to calm down and just reduce the level of everything going on. And once you can teach yourself how to do that, it's a skill that you can tap into in those moments where you do need it. So you bank some hours of practice, you do this on your own, and you build up that skill, you know what it feels like, so that the next time you're going into a work meeting or the grocery store or whatever situation makes you feel anxious, you go from up here to maybe just down to here. You use the breathing and it allows you to knock things down a few notches. The problem is when you do it and you haven't practiced it, it can make you feel more anxious because you think, okay, I know I'm supposed to do this breathing and it's supposed to calm me down. Let me try. <sighs> okay, I'm not calm. It's not working. Oh my God, I'm hopeless. I'm gonna die. Something's really wrong. I'm having a heart attack. Hospital. 
right? So you want to practice it so that you can rely on it as a skill. Is it going to take away all the anxiety that you feel? No. But like I said, it's from coming here to here. That's what it's about. Because up here, anxiety is running the show. It's making the decisions for you. It's saying you're going to avoid the situation or you need to leave or you need to freak out and do this or that. And if you knock, knock it down to, you know, maybe here or here, it's saying I have anxiety. I can feel this, but I also know in my logical mind that I don't need to, and I should do X, Y, Z. So I'm going to make the decision in spite of my anxiety to do those things. That's what you want to do. You want to make just enough wiggle room there so that you can be in control of your actions, even if there's still some anxiety present. So practicing a breathing exercise, teaching yourself how to engage that part of your nervous system that slows you down, consistently practicing it over time will give you the chance to use it in the action scenarios and knock yourself down a few notches when you need to. So that's what I'm talking about here. Basically, just try to understand that this is a skill that you need to build. And the more stubborn you are about not building it as a skill, the worse it's going to be for you when you try to use it in a real life scenario.